Welcome back to our weekly real estate podcast. Um, once again, my name is Ken Inks. I'm the host of the Inks Real Estate Team podcast. We're covering everything real estate related in Northern Nevada. Um, today um, is a special day for several reasons. Uh, first and foremost, uh, one of our most anticipated uh, guests, uh, his name is Chris Sarman. Sarman, that's correct, yeah. yeah. And he works with the Washoe County Assessor's Office. Yep. And your title is Senior Appraiser. Correct, yeah. So uh, what we're gonna do today is talk about how your taxes are calculated uh, for property taxes are created, uh, calculated and billed to you. Um, the other thing that we have going on is, Chris, did you know 25 more days till Christmas? Are you got, doing your shopping? I've got kids, so yeah, I'm all over it, yeah. <laughs> so 25 more days, so it's coming uh, up quickly, so take a look. There's uh, a lot of things out there to do, so. Um, also, uh, the big news in our court for the Inks Real Estate Team, this is our 100th podcast, so special day for you to come in. Special for you. Uh, appreciate you coming in and uh, sharing your knowledge. So let's get right to it. Uh, Chris, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, tell us about how long you've worked at the uh, Washington County Assessor and what do you do and what do you do for fun? Okay. Um, well, first, thanks for having me. Um, I think it's an important topic that... Um, many may not be familiar with many that are but it seems that uh, most people i talk with are pretty unfamiliar with it uh, especially even in your industry in the real estate side of things uh, agents and, and lenders and uh, but more importantly the taxpayer the, the person that's buying that property um, it's an important subject so uh, thanks for hosting and, yep. and asking some some good questions i think um, as far as myself i've been at the assessor's office now for roughly about I don't know, 15 years, That's I guess. Incredible. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, we're here by accident. Many of us are in this office. You know, I don't think anybody sets out to be um, working for a, an assessor department and, and maybe as an appraiser, but ultimately that's where I ended up with. That's what I'm here for. Um, and I'm here to answer some questions for you. Great. Um, what do you like to do for fun? I know you're from Elka originally. Um, what do you like to do for fun? Well, I've got a, I'm a man of many hats, right? I mean, I've got the dad hat. That's, that's probably the yeah, one. Me too. Um, I, I wear an adventure hat. I wear a wolf pack hat. Go pack. Uh, go pack, absolutely. And so a lot of different hats, that's for sure. So uh, like busy. Fun. Yeah, yeah, just like me. So, all right, well, let's get started because there's a lot of information to cover here. Um, so the first question, I have a list of questions here. Uh, we're going to try and keep this uh, on packed here because... There's a lot of stuff to cover and we want to get to it all. So um, the first question is, what is the basic purpose of property taxes? So people are getting a quarterly tax bill. Why? What is it for? Okay, so for those that don't know, obviously, uh, property tax, and, and just for the record to be clear here, uh, we at the assessor's office don't actually calculate taxes. Uh, we don't bill the taxes. What we do um, deal with discovering uh, listing uh, and, and valuing uh, property that is subject to taxation um, and ultimately that value will be taxed and that tax um, for those that don't know is a, is a big component the property tax uh, for uh, our local government for the revenues needed to supply the services that are either mandated through statute or um, are demanded by the taxpayer, right? So, uh, fire. We talk about roads, fire, you know, schools. School, yeah. So, uh, obviously, that money comes from somewhere. A large portion of that revenue, over fifty percent, um, comes from property taxes. So. Oh, it's fifty percent. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, it's yeah, it's an important component on uh, you know our quality of life in Washington County. It's Absolutely. Yeah. Because exactly uh, right. we don't have a state income tax, so we don't. Yeah. Most of it comes from property tax. So. Um, the next question I have for you, who pays it? Uh, well, property tax. I mean, okay. obviously it's... Yeah, yeah, so who pays it? So, well, there's two, there's two types of property tax, right? You've got uh, a real property tax and a, and a personal property tax. Um, on the real side, we're talking about your land, anything affixed to that land, like a house, a commercial building, um, and that goes as far as even concrete and asphalt, stuff that's permanently attached to the property. So the owner of that property is paying that property tax on the real property side. Um, on the personal property side, you're looking at business fixtures, business equipment. Um, you yourself might have some of those, um, yep. or your broker for sure. Yep. Um, uh, RVs are not, but you know, airplanes and uh, mobile homes would be another okay. example of that. So, um, 
that's the personal property side of things. Okay. So if you, if you own property in Nevada, you're probably paying property tax somewhere. One way or another. Yeah. Okay, and it varies. We'll talk about it in a second. It varies depending if you're a landlord versus you know single family owner occupied resident. So yep. um, now the other thing is that is an important note when we're talking about um, property taxes is what is the fiscal year in Nevada? What's your fiscal year? So our fiscal year operates um, from July 1st through June 30th. Okay. okay. So that's the county budgets. That's where our values are stemming from. That's that's the year in which we're operating. That's our fiscal year. So um, we are going out and um, as 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 an office and, and as appraisers, uh, we start a valuation period called our reappraisal cycle. We go out and we determine what the values are using as appraisers our historical data. Um, we determine what those values are. Um, usually around October, November, we clean up the roll. Once that roll is set, then we send out valuation notices to the taxpayers. You probably all see a little piece of paper that says, here's your value. Um, and when that, does that come out? That's that's in December. It's coming out here soon, right? Yeah, mm -hmm, very much so. Um, and so once we, that value goes out, you have an opportunity to look at that value, call us with any questions, um, and then we can reopen the roll for any new changes and additions to that um, property or that parcel number. Great. And then we're closing that roll again. June okay. 30th. So quick so, question is, I don't know how many, I should know this, but I don't know how many uh, properties are in Nevada or in Washoe County, but <laughs> how many people do you have working here to figure out all these? I mean, everyone's getting, if you own a piece of property, you're getting a tax bill. How do you figure all that out? That's what kind of resources do you need to, it's kind of an interesting thing that I never really thought about is everyone gets a bill. Yeah, are you we're using computers or what are you doing? Well, absolutely, it's a good question. Uh, we have 62, roughly 62 people in our department. Um, and roughly 179 par 79,000 parcels. Um, it's a lot of work for our office. We do um, annual reappraisal, um, and that's just that's just the appraisal side of it, right? I mean, there's a whole another subset of, of stuff that we do between um, mapping and assessment services and uh, all the things that go into that. I mean, we're working constantly working to keep our our, our records updated and trying to be transparent in that. So. Um, it, it's quite the task, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're working a lot. Absolutely. Because <laughs> uh, for the record, and I'm not saying this just to sign them on or anything, but the Washoe County Assessor's website is one of the best in the country. I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, I, I'm biased, but I absolutely think that too. I mean, if you have any idea, if you don't think so, uh, go to Story County, Lyon County. I mean, you can just, and we're going to have a whole podcast series on how to use that website because okay, cool. there's so much stuff. There's property boundaries, there's uh, parcel boundaries, there's how much you pay in tax, what the sales data was for. And it's a fantastic website if you're in the floodplain. So we're gonna cover that in another podcast. But That's I'm here cool. to tell That's you. Great. It is a great website. It, it is, if you haven't checked it out, what is the website? Uh, uh, WashoeCounty.org, or uh, US, I guess, or gov. Yeah, WashoeCounty.gov, so www, and then backslash assessor will get you to our, our page. Um, and there is all sorts of different information. It's fantastic. There, so. And it's it's and they do a great job. So a lot of questions for going through the day actually can be if if, if you want more clarity, um, yes, please jump on that website. Yep, and, check it out. So another question that's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> this is where the kind of the rubber meets the road is. Uh, what are the provisions governing property tax in English? In English, <laughs> that's is that hard. Possible? That's hard to do. No, because this is possible. one of the great mysteries. I'm here to tell you, it's one of the great mysteries of the real estate world is how a property that is in the north or old southwest that's evaluated at two million dollars is paying six hundred dollars a month or six hundred dollars a year annually in property tax so can you kind of this is going to be yeah absolutely i mean this it's is a, a tough time that, stay with us because it's a really good discussion yeah it's going to be um it's lengthy it's, a, it's a, but we we get that question all the time obviously right great so um the answer to that question uh, lengthy. So, I mean, if you've ever read the statutes and regulations, um, I tried to before I came in. Uh, did you? Okay, yeah. Confusing, awesome. complex. Yep. Um, so let me just kind of put this in, uh, into terms that hopefully can be understood by most people. Um, we're unique in Nevada. Our property tax system is unique. Um, unlike most states, whereby they are set on a market value system. I mean, California, for example. Uh, it's purchase price, right? You buy right. it for this, it's 1% of purchase price. 
um, we move forward in that direction. In Nevada, we are not a market uh, value system. Instead, we are a modified cost approach to value. So okay. what does that mean? So one question though, so people don't know this, mm -hmm. is that in Nevada, in your instance, is when you purchase your house, it doesn't reset the property tax based on 1%, correct? That's correct. Okay, so that's an important part that in California resets every time. So if you sell your house, someone comes and buys it, you buy it for 2 million, someone buys it for 10 million, they're paying 1% of 10 million, not no. Yep. It's, a, it's a, actually, it's a, it's a great, uh, clarifying question because right. we, we get that question all the time. We have clients of yours even, you know, uh, calling us saying, hey, what are our taxes gonna be? We just bought this place for this amount. Um, well, the question for us is easy because we've already established that value. And it's right. not based on upon that purchase price. A lot of people think it is. A lot of people have moved here from other places. That's what they're used to. Uh, in Nevada, we're special and we're unique in that we don't do it that way. So. I'll kind of go through it. Yeah, let's do it. Feel free to just keep I'm jumping gonna in. I'm going to kind of interject a little bit, but yeah, so, this is great. So uh, in Nevada, we're a modified cost approach to value. What, it, what, what that means is that we take land value and we establish what that land value is for that parcel. Um, and we do that. What's the full cash value? So we do do that on a market basis. Okay, what's the land value on a market full cash value basis? Keep in mind, however, we, we're doing that on a mass basis, right? <laughs> we're not going out to every single parcel. I mean... You know, so we're, we're establishing a base value for, let's just say a neighborhood, okay? Yep. We establish a base value, and then we can look at the parcels within that, of course, for size, uh, you know, amenities or detriments that might exist to a particular parcel, whether it has easements or it's bigger or smaller, uh, traffic, that sort of thing. And we can make some adjustments to that. Okay, so that's our base value. That's our land value that we're establishing from sales. We're from sales, okay, you look getting, at sales, we're you getting, don't just make this up. Yeah, we don't just make this stuff up, right? So we're looking at uh, sales that have occurred prior to- um, For raw land only. For raw land. Okay, because yeah. mm -hmm. we do some as a team, we do so, so, so that's the interesting note that that sets some of the precedence on what you guys are Absolutely, doing. Okay. so, and sometimes we have actual vacant land sales, sometimes we gotta use uh, different methods to get to that, like an or something like that, and I won't dive into that part. No, well that's a different topic. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, so. Once we have the land value established, then we're gonna to add to it uh, the improvement value, okay? The improvement value is anything that's been uh, built upon or erected upon that uh, vacant parcel, and we'll just use the case of a home, right? Home gets built up, that's an improvement value. Uh, that's gonna include your driveway, uh, landscaping. yard landscaping, yard items, that sort of thing. So anything that's being put on that parcel to improve it, uh, we're calling that an improvement, right? Improvement value. How do we get to the value of what that is? Okay, so that's where the cost approach comes in to effect. We are using Marshall Swift as our cost provider. We're, we're mandated by statute to do that. And we say, okay, it's a replacement cost and less depreciation. And what that means to uh, somebody that doesn't understand that, it's kind of like an insurance type right. value, right? Okay. But we look at it and we say, what would that improvement cost today to build that home Right, mm -hmm. and then we back out depreciation, which is statutory at one and a half percent per year per the age of the improvement up to fifty years. So, as an example, um, yeah, let's use an example. There, yeah, that's so it depre it goes down one and a half percent every year, but then the tax up to fifty years, yes. And then what happens after fifty years? It stays the same. It levels off. That's where yeah. So, it's interesting. I didn't know that. So fifty years, years at one and a half percent is seventy five percent, right? Yep. So let's just say let's just use that home that's fifty years old, and this kind of ties into that question uh, that you brought up earlier: two million dollar old home versus yep. new home. So um, you're going to have a um, fifty year old home. We got to look at it and say, okay, what would it cost today to replace it? Okay. Then we back out seventy five percent for the depreciation of it. We add that to the land value, we end up at a total taxable value. And so that's why you see a lot of these um, you know, questions and concerns with, well, how can this house that's you know, on the market value be worth $2 million, right. you know, be, have such a low taxable value? And that's appreciated, 75% now. Yeah, it's been paying taxes for a whole lot, whole lot of years already, right? Okay. Um, so that's how we get to our total taxable value. Now to get to the taxes from that, okay? <laughs> Woo! It's a convoluted system. I might have to get it the is. whiteboard out next time. Like, this yeah. is, no, this is great because people don't understand this, and it's pretty fascinating to me at least. It, it is. It, it's in, it's complex and unique. Um, so uh, ultimately, uh, the taxes we have taxable value, and then we apply statutory assessed rate, which is thirty five percent, to that value. We end up at assessed value, 
okay? Once we end up at assessed value, then we apply a tax rate to it, which can vary throughout whatever tax district you're in. But for the state of Nevada, it's gonna be a maximum of, of 3.66%. So 3.6, so it's $3 and 66 cents so per, per hundred dollars. Okay, yep. that's yep. a ratio. So, um, assessed value times your tax rate, uh, 0 0.0366, you know, is gonna end up with your taxes. Okay. Um, as an example, let's just say we had a, had a $100,000 uh, taxable value, we applied a 35% assessed rate to it. So 35,000 35, assessed value uh, times the 0.366% of the tax rate. Great. And you're gonna end up with about $1,200, $1,300 in taxes. Great, yeah. Okay. So 12% overall if we were gonna say taxes over taxable value. Okay. Yeah. But now let me throw <laughs> a wrench in thing. Woo! Are you Are you ready to keep yeah, going? Yeah, no, this is good. So we're at assessed, now we're at, take the tax law rate of point, you're saying it's 0.33, 0 0.366%. Or, or not 0.33, but it's 3.66%, but yeah, to get to, in the equation, it's 0.366. And then what does that give us? That gives us 0.366. When we take that assessed value times the tax rate, what does that give we us? We get taxes. Taxes, okay. In that's theory, the in theory. Okay. okay. Because this is where the, the wrench gets thrown into things. And you have to increase it though. When does that, when does the increase happen? Because well, it increases over year. Yeah, so we'll get to that point. Okay. This is, this, is where the, this is where the wrench comes into play. Okay. okay. So um, first and foremost, I mean, there is the wrench uh, of, you know, that our taxable value can't exceed market value. Okay. So we are bound to be sure that we are looking at market value and, and looking at our taxable value to make sure that taxable value does not exceed market value. Okay. So that's, that's a test that we got to look at. In today's market, when things are through the roof, yeah. Um, we are substantially lower than what the market value is. I mean, right. we have some cases that you might be 50, 70% of the sales price, right? Well, or year over year, it's 20% higher. And I would say several months, it was 25, 30%. Yep. Year over year. Yep. So it's, it's, been, it's been insane. Uh, now, for those that were here in our market in the recession, yeah. that's a different story, right? Values dropped, our taxable values are here. And it was a constant battle really, to kind of make sure that our taxable value wasn't exceeding market value. Right. And so there were some ways that we could throw obsolescence onto it or, or look at the land values as it was decreasing. And so, um, you know, different times now, thank goodness, right? I yes. Mean, yeah. well, I mean, those were some tough, we were just talking about that before we came on. Mm -hmm. There were some times where I thought I was going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, even a lot of people. Yeah, right? this is how it can work. You yeah. know, three of, uh, you know, one out of three of my friends was unemployed. But anyways, yeah. um, we're in better times now. So... That was wrench number one. Wrench number two is what we call the tax cap. And some of you may or may not be familiar with that. Uh, AB 489, which is implemented, uh, passed in legislation, I think in 2004, implemented in 2005. And what that simply means is that taxes cannot go up for a primary residence or low income rental uh, by more than 3%. Okay, so if you, I just want to use an example, mm -hmm. real easy one. So it's a thousand. Let's just say that was, you were paying property taxes last year at a thousand. Mm -hmm. The new increased rate can only go up three percent on that. Correct. So a thousand thirty. Yep. If I'm at it. Okay. Fix it. Yeah. And then we'll talk about rentals in a second. But so it can that so you figure all that out, and then you can only increase it per state law, two thousand five, three percent. Three percent primary residence. Right? Primary residence. Everything else is going to be upwards uh, to a maximum of eight percent. Okay, and and I don't know if we've ever hit eight percent. To be honest, I don't know, uh, but I can tell you over the last ten years that high cap. So what we call a low cap, which is your primary residence, okay. and a high cap, which is up to eight percent. That's going to be on your vacant land, your commercial properties, that sort of a thing. And over okay. the last ten years, it's really probably been between zero and four percent. Um, we've had, and I say zero, and that's kind of a scary figure to be honest with you. Um, yeah. And when you have people that are based on yeah budgets, cool. right? And, yeah. And as a taxpayer, great, but um, from a budget standpoint and a revenue, um, or as a resident that wants your community, right? That's, that's true. zero. Mm -hmm. That's a tough thing to keep all the services that we have. But. Yeah, it's, and I don't think it was anticipated, right, when the legislation passed. No, this, it could be zero. So, so you're so. saying now, what happens on a rental? Can do you see them going up to eight percent? Or I guess we'll talk about that in a second. We can get to that in a second. Okay. Yeah, let's kind of finish the thought process here. We'll get to this that. This is good. Um, but, you know, this year I think we're up to 6% on the high cap, last year 5 So it is going up. And it's all based on CPI, okay? It's Consumer Price Index. So, um, which is a direct measure of inflation. And that's yeah, well, we have inflation right now. So you could probably yeah. see it come up mm -hmm. to... Oh, this year 6.3. Okay, so. you're going to have to calculate it. 
for the next fiscal year. Yeah, for the taxes this year that we're paying right okay. now. So okay. Um, and maybe that's a good point we can jump on to later as far as where we're at in the fiscal cycle. You know, our values versus what the taxes we pay. But ultimately, anyways, so that's that's another wrench in the system, right? So we've done all this um, calculating, as you might say, to come up with a taxable value, to come up with assess rate or assess value taxes, right? But those taxes, in theory, uh, could be much higher than taxes, taxes that are actually being paid. Why is that? Because we just talked about the recession, right? Values may have plummeted, capped off, taxes are here. And so there's this margin of what taxes are actually being paid that are down here versus what should be, well, not should be, but could be being paid based right. on our system. Yep. And that difference between actual taxes and taxes based on that formula that we went through is called an abatement. Okay, so um, you're not going to see that obviously on new homes because they didn't exist in a time when values were low and they got capped in at a low rate. Uh, newer homes you're, are going to be coming in at a much higher, you know, they're going to be more equalized. The abatement's probably zero actually at this point. Right. So, um, but anyway, so that's the, that's the other wrench in in this equation. Wow. And when you have capped taxes, and and I think it's really important for for your listeners and for those that are owning homes that you know our taxable value may go up. 30, 40%. Right, but where are your taxes, taxes are 3%. Yeah, 3%. So, um, and what you're actually paying in taxes um, from a tax cap standpoint, and you can back into it the reverse, right, with the formula that we use, right. and end up with a cap value. And those are just two different things. So, um, it is complex. We're here to help you. Um, I'm glad you're here to try to help. Yeah, so why don't you, we'll do this at the end, but why don't you kick your number out if you have questions? Can you just give me your information? Just Yeah, so we uh, have questions. You can jump onto our website again, yep. right? But you can also call, uh, I think our front counter is 328-2233. Okay, if it's not, um, I'll put it on there correct. Yeah, that'd I'm be cool. Sorry to put you right yeah, on the spot here. I might even have it written down. No, so that's I'm cool. With you. So, no, I'll yeah, get 2233, that's okay. the number. So. Yeah, so if you have questions about that, it is a complex thing. Mm-hmm. Um, is, there any, is there any plans in the legislature to switch it? Well, there's, 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 there's been a couple different... It's um, hard, though, because it's... It, well, right? yeah, it's constitution change, right? And they've actually looked at it. I mean, and that's one of the things, right, is that as a government entity, as a, as a local government that's trying to project and finance and, and look at revenues going forward, you know, a lot of times the tax cap is looked at it as, as a handcuff, right? right? We're handcuffed. It's not only the tax cap, but the tax rates, because they can only go up to 3.66. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people look at that as being a handcuff. As a taxpayer, Right. Okay. There's, there's the other side. You know, there's the other side of it. So um, there has been legislation put in place in the past. Um, you know, historically, they we looked at going to a market value system um, that was did not pass. We looked at a bill called uh, SGR 14, um, which that was gaining some traction and, and had lost, and that was going to reset your depreciation upon the sale of the property. So maybe you've heard of that. Um, and we talked about that, what that depreciation is, right? So if you had that home that was 50 years old and you sold it, um, you're going to lose, you're going to reset the depreciation, which, um, the big thing, it, it's a big thing. It's big value, but it's also puts a lot of extra work on us as well. Right. In this office too, now we're managing different properties with different laws <laughs> and just more band-aids. Right. And right. so, um, it would, it would be a tough thing, I think, you know, especially for if, if you think about somebody that's selling a house and you think about clients of yours, uh, whereby, you know, everybody's tied to a monthly payment, right? Yeah. Well, and the taxes are going up, well, that decreases your purchasing power, which then ultimately may result in a right. loss of equity to the to the seller. Yeah, right? I mean, so, there's a, it's a complex situation that impacts yes. a lot of people, mm-hmm. especially if you're a buyer and the taxes are going to reset and that really lowers and it could just drop the market down, right? Because yeah, the market's because. efficient. So if you, your properties are skyrocketing, then that pr- the value is going to fall. Especially so for the, I think, the lower income, lower yeah, and middle. Absolutely. So that's where it gets challenging. Well, great job. I get, was, I get why they want it, though. You that know, was a so. fantastic discussion. So um, anything else to add to that? I um, I, you know, I got, I've got, got some notes here that I wrote down. I'll just kind of go through it. Um, I think that's. I think that I think kind that of was gets great. everything. I mean, the, so. the seventy-five percent is not something I would even have an idea about. So, well, that's that fair and equitable part of it, right? Because we want to be fair and we want to be equitable, and then all of a sudden you've got new homeowner with new home bill. Yeah, so that's old perfect. homeowner. This house is worth less. 
than this house. This house is paying less in taxes. And so the, everybody wrestles with that concept. Well, how's that fair and how's that equitable? It all comes down into that depreciation rate, yep. which is statutory. And um, really, I mean, if you, if you think about it too, that older home, it needs uh, improvements. It needs improvements. Yeah, so they're going to be paying for that. They're going to pay for it through sales tax potentially, right? Right, buying new stuff, putting yep. a new roof on. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. So I, it's not an easy topic to, uh, to get wrap your arms around. Because yep. one way or the other, you're going to impact somebody. Yep. So just, you got, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and I just wanted to add on to that too, that, that tax cap. Um, that is, that that's that's tied to what exists, right? So if you have a, a new home, or you do an addition or a remodel, or you change the the use through zoning or something to that on your on your vacant land, that that's all new value and that is that's new to the rule that falls with outside the cap uh, for that first year that it gets put in place, right? Okay. Then it's cap going forward. So okay, so that leads us right into our next question is because okay. the people are shocked when they go buy a new home because <laughs> they're like. So what is someone, if someone goes out and buys a new Tool Brother house in South Reno, whatever, Northwest Reno, what are they expecting, and it's a million dollars, what is their expected tax value the first year? Well, without seeing that on the record, right, or having a specific property that we could look at on record, um, if, you're gonna, if, we were, if, if we were a market value system, right, yeah. we, would be, we could be at the 12% through our calculation that we did. Right. right. Um, um, or the 1.2 percent, you know, of effective. So, um, but really, we're not because we have that that land that's established on a market right mass basis. Put something on there. And then, if you look at our, our costs, I mean, in theory, our costs right to replace that building should be equal to what the builder put on that property, right? right. But it's it's not actually. So, if you looked at what that house was, what they bought it for, and what our actual taxable value is. It's, it's still substantially less. And that's it's, that's mainly because of what driving those, the, our costs, you know, is from Marshall and Swift. And, and we might see that change in the next couple of years because, you know, there's a historical amount of data that has to be collected, analyzed, put together. And then by the time they get that published and put out to us, right, we might be, you know, a year and a half out from what, what those projections were right. as a cost modifier at, through time. As, as, building materials go up and that sort of thing. We know that lumber right now and steel and concrete are through the roof. Right. Uh, but you know, we're not seeing that in our costs right now, right? Right. But we might. So um, I, I do think that just historically though, that there just hasn't been that big of a comparison and that uh, the market value, that million dollar house that somebody paid, our taxable value is probably not a million dollars. Right. If we're over, please call us. We need to fix that. But we're probably substantially lower than what you bought the house for. And that is why a lot of people are moving here, right? That's why a lot of people love our tax system. Right. Um, and it's it's really kind of a benefit to the taxpayer. Uh, so, But you're gonna pay more for a new brand new home because there's no oh, depreciation, yeah. right? Oh yeah, you're gonna pay. Because uh, that depreciation is gone. The first year you don't have Zero depreciation. depreciation, yeah, zero depreciation. So. Um, and so, unfortunately that's the case, right? So, high, so that, and that, we talked to this, about our clients a lot is you might want to buy an older home with less taxes just to get in because you can afford it. Yeah, you, you might know. have to put a couple hundred thousand dollars into remodeling that house, it's so a, that can offset that. Yep. Too. So that's a good point that I don't discuss much, and that's actually a really good point that people should know about is you buy an older home, you're going to need to fix it up more, so mm -hmm. the taxes are less. So great question. And, and a lot of the older homes too, they don't offer, you know, some of the some of the things that are wanted by buyers in the market right, right. you know vaulted ceilings and you know i live in an older home myself 1960 home mm -hmm. you know i deal with eight foot ceilings and you know chopped up rooms yep. and which works great when the kids are running around and they're loud and crazy but um you know so there's some give there's pros and cons yep give and take to each so but more property taxes for a new one that's the bottom line mm -hmm. is um yep. we kind of talked about this but let's reiterate it um Okay, it looks like December 18th. When is the notification of assessment coming out? Yeah, so we, we, we try to wrap up our rule here, and, and which we've already done here, actually, uh, just recently, I think last week. Um, so we're, you're going to start seeing evaluation notices coming out within, you know, the first part of December, essentially, is what we try to do with that. Um, you look at that valuation, you call us with questions that you might have. Um, 
we're, we're, it's really one of the good things about our office. And I don't know if you've been called down here, no. but we always have somebody here available to speak to. Mm -hmm. It's we're one of few, well, maybe not one of few departments, but we're definitely one department that has somebody here. We'll pick it up, you'll get a voice, you can talk to somebody. And I can tell you, I mean, sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, I'm not an appraiser, I'm a therapist, right? <laughs> because you sit there and, uh, but the taxpayers are generally 99% of the great, you know, and uh, so. How many of them are there again? How many what? Uh, appraisers? We've got 62 employees in our, in our um, department. Size. We've got about 20 appraisers, so, um, you know. I'll keep it's, working on it. It's a challenge, it's, but we're here. There's somebody, we always make sure that we have a handful. And of that's my experience is that's how I got this podcast that I called and I got to, uh, Chris. So it's great that you take the time to do this. So that kind of shows you your willingness to help out. So, um, my question is when they get the assessment, what do they do with it? Cause I know a lot of clients are just like this. It comes with a Christmas card to throw it out. What do they, what do you do with that? When you get this is what should you be doing? Well, I, I would, uh, Review it. Yeah, of course you want to review it. Um, you know, if you think it's if you think it's too high, you know, again, call us. There's a process for that. There's a process to that. I mean, we want to be transparent. And here's your new value. Um, and again, I think it's important for you to say, okay, well, here's my value. You know, and it may have gone up fifty percent. Right? We just talked about that. Or your taxes are still capped. But having said that, so I mean. We want our values to be correct, right? I mean, yeah. we want them to be good. So if they're not, call us. We can talk about it, discuss it. Um, and, and ultimately, if you disagree with it. There's a whole yeah. process that if you look online, it actually talks about how you go through the process to get it reviewed and take a look at it. Yep. So if you disagree with it, you're unhappy with the response, uh, the inquiry that you've made with, with, with us and the team here. Um, you can appeal that value, and that's maybe where you're getting at with this, is that uh, January 15th is an appeal deadline. You can file an appeal uh, to the County Board of Equalization. Um, and, you know, hopefully we don't get to that point, but sometimes we do. Sometimes right. we do, sometimes we just disagree to disagree. Right. Okay, and that's fine. Uh, that but we do fun. ask that, you know, in fact, if you appeal and we end up going to a hearing that gets scheduled, it's in front of the County Board of Equalization. It's a five-member five board. Um, and so you would present your evidence, the support of your value, what you think the value should be, and you'd provide the support for that and the reason why you think it should be lower. Um, if it's good evidence, to be honest with you, if, it, if it's good evidence, if it's supporting evidence, we're looking at that. I mean, we're looking at it with, with an open uh, frame of mind, right? right. And um, so if it's good, you know, we're probably going to be able to work with you before we ever get to that point. Great. Um, sometimes people just... And it's a complex it's, it's a complex issue, and sometimes working through it with some folks just don't understand it. Right. Um, and other times, you know, we are we are in the wrong too. And I'm not saying that we go to the board and we we're successful every time. We're not um, because you know sometimes it takes that third party or that other individual to kind of read through what we're presenting or somebody right. else is presenting. And you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, we love you all, but you know, sometimes somebody else has to make that decision. Yeah, so. that's right. The third party that kind of looks at both parties and mm -hmm. figures it out. So great discussion on that. Um, and then the biggest thing that I see um, is this whole thing about partial abatement, assess, uh, partial abatement, abatements. Okay, and so what is that? And then that comes out when? Because then there's another notification that comes out that says you need to look at this form and identify the property if it's a rental versus owner occupied. So what is that? And okay, so you're getting back in back into the abatements what we talked about. Right? Yeah, we're talking that's about that's kind of that difference of that tax, that cap on taxes versus what you could be paying if there was Actual. no cap on taxes, right? So yes, that's the abatement. That's the difference of an abatement. Okay, we talked about high cap and we talked about low cap, and I think what you're referring to is that. Um, you know, we can have rental properties that are high cap because, um, you know, they exceed the, the HUD guidelines and the risk for that. So that's, a, I want to stop you right there. Okay. So there is federal guidelines, the HUD guidelines for what you can, you have it. Yeah, yes. so I've got it right here. So this I might one, put this on the screen. I'm going to take this home. Yeah. So yeah, you can yeah, zoom so, that in if you want. And, but I'll put it on the screen. But so, because a lot of people don't know you own a rental. And you're trying to figure out if I'm falling in that 3% as a rental or am I going to be up to 8%. Mm -hmm. And tell us, where does this information come from and how is it used? Right. So 
the, the, the abatement, okay, so it, it, again, our fiscal year is July 1 through June 30th. Yeah. Right? So if, if a property changes ownership, or, and sometimes renters are sold to a primary occupant, right? right. So uh, it's important. So we'll always send out a form. Um, typically, you're going to see that in April. We kind of see what happens in the year. We're going to send one out in April. We're going to say, hey, is this your primary residence? If so, let us know because we need to change it from a high cap to a low cap, right? The 8% to the 3%. Right. Um, now, when does that come out? That comes out if it changes value, if it changes... If it changes ownership. Ownership, right? right. Now, what yeah. happens if it's like between two people and it's switched or if there's a... So, it's just ownership. It's not necessarily yeah, yeah, like a title change. Would a title change for to a trust trigger that or... It could, yeah, okay. absolutely. I mean, it's a change of ownership, right? So even though it might be you and it's still a trust, it's but it's still owned differently. And you right? get a form that says, yeah, this is so, still you. Yeah, and we're gonna ask, we're gonna ask you, you know, is this property a rental or is it your primary residence? Um, you know, and that, that there's a couple different questions that go with that. I mean, there's there's some people that have other homes in other states and and that sort of thing. And if you have your home in Nevada, you're allowed to call it the primary residence, okay? Right. So if you have multiple homes, which one is your primary, which one's your rental? Right. And if you want to qualify for a low cap on your rental, then that means you got to be, uh, the income on that rental is low, okay? And so that's why we're using uh, back into the HUD rents, right? So okay. what qualifies it as a low income rental? Um, you know, an example for this Yeah, year. let's throw these out. I'd like to talk about like bedroom one, two, and three, and four. Yeah, so, so. if you've got a one bedroom, uh, property right uh low income is considered 892 okay that's if you, if you per month you, per month okay you know if, if the utilities are covered in that then you're talking about 964 okay okay the, the two bedroom here is listed at uh thousand eleven 1, hundred essentially right right um and utilities being 1200 three bedrooms 1600 with utilities 1742 so it, it, if you're it, over it, that that's when you get the yeah, if you're over that, that's when you're going to get the high cap, right? And for the most part, I mean, anybody that, um, you know, I, I have rentals myself. Um, Great. I and, too. And so, you know, most most renters or landlords are, are trying to capitalize upon the market rent. And right. these are, the rents that I just quoted to you are below market rent, okay? For our area. For our area. Maybe yeah. not, but this is, a, this is a federal standard, right? Well, this is for our Washington. Oh, it area. actually is standardized yeah. for this area. Okay. Washoe, Washoe County fair market rent, so that's how we look at that. Um, and so, you know, for example, I mean, I don't know if you can find a, a three bedroom place in Reno right now for $1,600 a month. Uh, you can, but there are few and far between. Right, so, so that's when it kicks you in that time, that other mm -hmm. tax bracket. Yep, okay. so for you and your clients and your listeners, bought a house, you know, to make sure that you're looking at the, the, the low cap, high cap. You're filling out the form that we send you. If for some reason you don't fill out the form the first time we send you another form, we are trying to get a response. But right? if you don't respond, it goes to the high cap until you respond. Well, it, yeah, it, 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 there's got to be um, some self-responsibility with that because we don't know, right? Right. We can do some research, but how much time can we spend and on it? So. Don't throw those away because I know people just throw them away. And I can tell you. Yeah, please don't. Um, of all of our clients, I would say forty to fifty percent don't respond, and they're paying the the higher the high cap. Oh, really? And what you can do is you can log on the assessor's website and type in your address, correct? Yes. And there's a box, and we're going to go over this in the podcast. You can look to see you're in the low cap. Yeah, there actually it. is. Yeah, it's there. And a lot it, of information there, and that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's right on there. It says high cap, low cap. So if it's your primary residence and it's not, what do they do if they find out that they're in the high cap and it's their primary residence? They call, call us. Toss, you'll you'll we'll switch get it, it fixed out. Yeah, we'll, we'll change. What it. kind of uh, information do they need to provide to prove to you that that's their? Well, home? it's it's their ownership, right? This is our single home. Um, just okay. just basically a, a, a testation to it, right? You right. Know, I test that this is my primary residence, and then you know if there's questions to it because we, you know we can search through our database and we can say, well, you you actually have Six four homes. homes there. Yeah, yeah, which one is it? Which one is it? You know, it can't be all of them, so. So check that out, especially if you're buying a home um, or if you just bought a home, make sure that you're in the right tax. Because I'm just telling you, 40 to 50% of the people, it's not correct. Well, that's that's, and that's a, a number that I don't like hearing, the, to be honest with you. I know, but that you're paying 6.3 versus an increase. Yes. You're paying a 3% increase, so check it out. And, you know, something that <clears throat> we'll link this is something that if you're going to get uh, a bedroom for a rent for uh, 12 
2110, you might want to lower it a little bit to stay on that 3% tax cap. I'm just saying that yeah. there's different. There's, look there's, at these. There's some options to look at, yeah. You might want to lower it a little bit so you don't have to pay the extra 3%, correct? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if it, if it is a rental, this is not a one year. I mean, if you are qualifying for a low income, you know, we're going to ask for those rents every year. Right. Because obviously, you can't just come in one year, get it lower, and then the next year raise your rents. Okay. And so, yeah. So, great discussion today. You're yeah. awesome. No, um, I, I, I appreciate you having me. And, and I might come back in. At, and, uh, yeah, because this is a really good topic that nobody understands. I bet, I bet, I bet fewer than 20% of the people out there understand what. And that big discussion there for 20 minutes is is excellent and they're very really approachable i mean i just oh, called chris and it turns out we knew each other from basketball league so it's kind of cool i said i know you from somewhere so um if you guys have any other questions feel free to give uh the front desk what's the front desk number again uh what was it three two eight two two three three um they'll put you in touch with the, the appraiser or somebody to speak to one last question so. one last question now as an appraiser are you responsible for an area in town if you work here or how, yeah. how do you get responsibilities are you always responsible for Northwest Reno, or how does that? Yeah, so we have uh, obviously the different areas of, of Washoe County in our area here between Reno and Sparks and Lake Tahoe and uh, Montreux and you know out in Bird Eye. I mean, there's there's a lot of different areas, right? And yeah. So we absolutely we have appraisers that are are uh, specifically uh, assigned uh, neighborhoods. We call them okay. neighborhoods, okay, areas, um, and. Then we've got specialists that are for industrial and commercial okay. retail, and and uh, we've it's got a complex. We've got apartment uh, specialists, and uh, you know even with ag, there's some ag stuff too. Uh, but yeah, it's you know obviously just putting the right people in the right positions, and it's and a complex we, thing. Yes, it's very complex. Just, it, all the different uses, and yeah, it's just real. And the different areas, there's a huge difference between South Reno and North Valley's or. And pe so, yeah, people forget how big Washoe County really is. I mean, we go all the way up to the Oregon line. Yeah. So, I mean, you think about all that rural stuff that's way out there, um, you know, but even just within just within our vicinity here, you know, it, it can change a lot, right? From the right. south to the north right. and from the east to the right. west. And so um, it is. It's, it's, it's actually a very interesting job. And so... Um, Sounds like it. It's, it's a lot of work though. Yeah. Hey, so last question. <laughs> I have to ask one more question because it's the great unknown. Who takes the picture on the assessor? So when you go in, log in, if you go to the Washington County Assessor, type in your address, and you scroll down, there's a little picture. Of, of the house? house. Yeah, yeah, who takes that? So um, That's a lot of picture taking. It's a lot of picture taking. Who takes and, that? Well, so historically, right, there's a lot of them that have been historical pictures. Uh, but yeah, anytime there's a new build, you know, we, we want to be on site. We want to be looking at what this stuff is, you know. Uh, we also have some technologies that allow us to look at it from an aerial standpoint, that sort of a thing too. But, you know, any kind of new improvement, we want to be on site and we want a record that we've been there from the street, you know, unless we get permission from you, the, the property owner, to, to come in and look at it and take some other pictures. Um, but to, to kind of keep that updated all the time, you know, within a five year safe period. Five years um, safe. So that's a great question to ask. And so, um, you know, there are, there are companies that, that you can hire to go out there okay. and drive the streets, kind of like your Google Earth or- Some of them are well done. Like sometimes we want to show a house that we sold, we got the assessor and kind of go, eh, that might be good. <laughs> so, so great. Well, thanks for coming hey, in. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. Um, hopefully, you, yeah, go ahead. hopefully our listeners or your listeners got, uh, makes yeah, a little bit more sense. Well, them, they're so. going to get something out of it because this is just a great topic that I've been dying to talk about for 18 months since I started. So it's fitting. It's on the hundredth episode. So yeah, that's great, man. Um, and it's it's it is complex. So again, call us if you have any questions. Yeah, and they're very approachable, like I said. So um, with that being said, I uh, hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, go get your Christmas tree. Start getting in the Christmas spirit. We're 25 days out. Start looking at it because you don't want to be stuck at the end with no Christmas presents for the kids. So. <laughs> Until next time, um, you guys take care. Please subscribe if you like our uh, information today, and keep watching. We have a lot of great. Uh, content coming up. So till next time, you guys have a good one. Thank you.